Ah, hello. Hello, everyone. Let's see here. Looks like we're starting right on time. Guess I'll have a couple of... Well, we're going to see people populate as we go along. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. It's a pleasure to meet you all, um, or e-meet you all. Um, strange times we're in, right? But um, I'm really excited, and I'm thoroughly ecstatic for being able to give this lecture, or not really a lecture, or just a hangout, just for talking. Hello. Um, so first, uh, my name is Jonathan Adams. Um, I'm originally from Bristol, Virginia, Tennessee. I'm currently based in Tennessee right now. I've been relaxing, being able to, uh, after graduating, I, I came back, take store of myself. Um, and really just being able to see, uh, let's see. Yeah, to be able to find something that was relaxing, but like uh, some sort of introspection of myself because it's so wild out there. And I believe taking some time, pulling away from all the commodifications, all the work, um, and really just burnout. Yeah. So um, basically, I'll just be talking about a little bit about my practice, a little bit about my inspiration, what I'm doing now, um, or technically what I'm not doing now, which is just resting. <laughs> um, Let's see. And then, uh, oh, yeah. And obviously, like, if anyone at all has any questions at any time, feel free to interrupt me. Um, if you got something going on, I'll hop right in. Uh, I'm just going to be showing a couple images. Um, I think I have this presentation right here pulled up. Here we go. And I'm a screen share little bits about me and stuff. Cool. Here we go. So, um, we're not, we're not, I'm not gonna make this stuffy. I'm just gonna make this just as informal as possible. Don't need to formalize internet space, but here we go. So, um, basically about, uh, I'll do like parts about my work about two years ago. And um, I'll tell you, like, we're gonna like progress track that, okay? Um, so about two years ago, I really started thinking of like the iconography and, and the mythology that I have built around my work and all the images they take. Um, I began thinking of birds or uh, birds in like the multiplicity. Like what do birds represent? They represent um, America. They represent um, mythology. They represent um, at some points fascism and it was so interesting to see all this complicated history that's compounded around the imagery of a bird, which this is this pedestrian animal that just sort of exists with us with this 360 degree uh, maneuver, or they move, or they go where they please. And it's wild to me that um, they have such freedom and such energy. Um, and as I've been going along, I sort of use my work as a journaling process. Um, particularly with Faraday Cage, which, which occurred about man, about two years ago. Oof, losing track of time already. Um, Faraday Cage was a um, really interesting project where I was in the hospital and I created the entire show. Um, all the drawings you see here and all the work that you see on the walls were like made in the process from the bed of my hospital, of the hospital. And I just kept working with it and placing them together. Um, a little while after that, um, I had an exhibition with Kara Walker, or, well, she had an exhibition uh, about me in the Brooklyn Art Material Terminal with many other brilliant artists um, from Rutgers, and it was fantastic. Here, I made these gigantic storms, which were about 15 feet tall. Um, they're really tiny, seen from this, um, but they're all in ink. And I use different types of metals, like these sort of commodified stones, and I blend them together inside to really show that distance. And it gives some sort of dimension between the flatness of the ink. Um, I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, but it was a really interesting experience to have these gigantic drawings that are like bodies, but then also talking to Kara and also talking to his uh, other artists, this sort of monumental show. And it was really one of the first um, monumental shows I had. And it was so lovely and so warming. 
Um, let's see here. I also have um, this turnover to my thesis work, which actually includes the piece um, in question. My thesis happened earlier this year, um, and I'm thoroughly excited about it. And honestly, it's still hanging up there. Um, it's kind of funny thinking about my art, like my art show living without me and like it existing like years, years into the future. And it's still installed, but everything's occurring. We're like, oh, yeah, just come and see this show. <laughs> Um, so I did these gigantic, um, wall drawings and some smaller ones as well. Um, all about my history and all about, um, this sort of compact, like complicating imagery as it goes along. Um, it was quite difficult to really find where I wanted to go, but it was really rewarding to find myself within my work and be able to communicate with my work, exactly what I'm saying, and, or I hope to be like exactly what I'm saying. Um, there are so many smaller pieces, larger works as well. Um, this was titled Finish Your Plate. Um, it's this small little drawing I've done in ink. Um, it was so wonderful. And I began thinking about um, how these images sort of exist, sort of aspects of a larger, broader story. Um, they never tell the entirety of the story. They only tell little bits and pieces. And these little bits and pieces are just um, shoe-ins or tie-ins to a larger narrative. And I love taking those and pulling them apart. And it adds this veil of mystery that wasn't necessarily there before or that sort of mimics the sort of internal conflict with the sort of characters or the environment that occurs with it. So I began using like different sorts of writing and it's like compiled like below it and on top of it. And at first I was like, okay, this isn't working. Um, someone stopped me. I have no idea how any of this is going to work, but I just had to see it through. And um, it became this uh, practice of trusting myself. If a thing doesn't work, run it again. And if it doesn't work in, try something different. And having faith in my own abilities of like, man, this stuff is going to be put together. Um, I also had another large drawing in there, which is probably my largest. It was about 20 feet. It's um, another storm drawing in ink that um, I think there's five of them. Yeah, there's five of them. I'm losing track of my own work all. <laughs> um and then blending them together with other pieces and seeing which ones talk to each other. I sort of move them around, place them in my studio as I go. This one's titled Intimate Me, a small self-portrait of myself um, from first grade. Um, it reflected so much about how I felt now, well, how I felt then as a child, but then how I feel now, like as an adult going through academia, but then also navigating other systems, systems that weren't necessarily made for me, but systems that still exist or systems that need some sort of disruption. And I felt that, and I wanted to be able to give that sort of um, complicated language or that complicated imagery and just compile it all and press it into like the sheet of paper that's going on. Um, and then the social movement. Um, recently, I've been thinking about social movements. Um, especially for when um, Ahmaud Arbery, um, a tragedy, honestly, um, how trends arise and push uh, political agendas and how lots of things sort of just loom in the background. But then what does that mean for us? How do we experience that? And how do we butt up against um, these strange events that are really intense that we can't necessarily make words of? Um. And this is, I want to better please show me how, um, was the, well, is the piece in B20. Um, I want to thank, honestly, um, Wiregrass um, for the platform they're giving me and me being able to speak to you all today. Um, particularly, I used this from actually a photo image from my family. Um, I had come back uh, about eight months, nine months ago 
to uh, back home with my grandmother and we were perusing through photos. And I thought about um, how power exists in the multiple sides of it. What, what would people do for it? Well, classism. And I began to see our family um, baptized in this floor, uh, in the basement of a church that was so strange, but so common in the South. It's such a warming thing to be baptized. It's such a strange thing for someone to give themselves to, to a, a larger power. And I love that idea. And I also think about, but what if this power has or is um, some sort of malevolent force? Is it different? Is it necessarily what we need? Um, I try to reach all of my work with some sort of skepticism. Um, because I don't really take everything at face value, honestly. I just sort of take it and go, all right, but is it really? It could be something else entirely. <laughs> um, it was so difficult. And honestly, I hated making this piece in the beginning. I didn't know what to do with it. I just had it up. And I was like, all right, uh, I'm sick of this. I'm going to throw it away. And I just kept working through it. <laughs> I kept drawing on it and just drawing and drawing. And then I began to really enjoy making it. And like, all right, and it became a really interesting experiment until it finally arrived to what you see before you. It's this amalgamation of histories, my own mythologized biography, um, my family mythologized um, history, and this sort of strange sort of redness, this um, flare, this sort of fire that exists. So before I continue, I'm going to see if I can exit and see if, what else is in the chat. Here we go. Sweet. Good. Still making good time. Yeah, me too, Martha. I'm so glad I didn't throw it away. <laughs> I tried. I tried so much and I was like, I have no idea what this is. Um, but it became really enjoyable at the end. Um, let's see here. So yeah, feel free to ask questions as we go. Well, as I go. Um, let's see here. I'm going to keep sharing. And we'll talk about some inspos and things as well. Hmm. Let's skip ahead here. Sweet. All right, now we're on to inspirations. Um, this slide is like all these are like really like dense. I really love pretty much um, everything. And if it's a thing, I'm trying to get my hands involved. Um, I make a lot of mistakes. I will say that I make so many mistakes, but they're so generative and fruitful. And then if I if it didn't work out, I'm like, all right, so why not? All right. It worked out some other way, but it didn't work out this way. Um, so recently, um, I was inspired mostly by my town, which is um, right on the line of Virginia and Tennessee, which is which is something I didn't understand when I, uh, leaving Bristol that it wasn't really commonplace. And I was like, it's, it's not. It, it, doesn't everyone have this? And it became so strange to talk about like um, the differences in the religion and the sort of excavation of uh, histories that are like placed deep down and. Um, it feels so raw, but so spiritual and a lot of times ominous. Um, every bit about this feels ominous. And then the Power Rangers. Um, who doesn't want to be a Power Ranger, honestly? I'm still red. I still would like to be red. Um, but I'm, I love the fact of like this sort of like deus ex sort of existing. And they're just like, oh, yeah, it's the Power Rangers. They exist. But the idea of a superhero or of another being able to go through something else is so wild to me. Um, but I love. Um, so uh, some artists I want to talk about. One is Mark Thomas Gibson, a black artist in Pennsylvania. Well, he teaches at PAFA currently. And he makes these really intricate um, ink drawings um, that sort of like reference Henri Damier that have this flair for like 1980s comic books and that narrative is all throughout his work and i just love it i love it and i've been written like speaking to him meeting some of his like uh seeing some of his work in person and having conversations about the political climate today is um 
one of the beneficial things about being an artist, being able to converse with other artists and being like, so what are you doing? Look, what are you looking at? And he's just throwing stuff out. And it's been really helpful to see for me. It's like, yeah, you can work. You can work through this. You can put, um, in this case, like brush pen to paper and make something happen, make a statement. Um, I'm also really, uh, really enjoying Takeko Inoue's uh, drawings, particularly from his, he's a manga artist, um, his manga of Vagabond, which was, which is still just gorgeous. Um, he has so many little worked crosshairs and ink work and brushwork that's just insane. Um, I love looking at his work and like watching his process when he used to make these. Um, it's on indefinite hiatus now. The, sh- the actual manga itself is over, but I always reference back to when I want to see some sort of density, when I want to see this um, flair uh, for the dramatic to sort of exist and really work toward the sublime. Oh, and Angela DeFresney, both her and uh, Mark Thomas Gibson are represented by M plus B. Um, fantastic artist, fantastic place. Um, I really love Angela's work too, just for the narrative, um, how she complicates the situations, how she thinks about the body and how all of her paintings sort of fluctuate, but all of her work seems so intense. They seem so rich and complicated with layers and layers of story. And every time I look at one of her works, I just sort of get lost. Um, I find myself staring at photo after photo and I'm like, little snapshot of snapshots and um it's such an aesthetic appeal about it there's there's something like the scraping and pushing and pulling um her work is phenomenal and if you ever see her work in person or if you like ever have a chance totally go see it brilliant stuff um also some other artists i've been looking at um also giovanni battista tiepolo a rococo painter um I, I cannot get enough of his artwork. I, I literally seek it out. When I went to the Met, I was there just gawking at his, at his paintings because they're, they're so much like drawings and they're so soft. And um, I always want to say velvety and I, like I'm moving my, like, my thumb between my index finger, like rubbing them together, like, like texture. They have such like this textual sort of velvetiness that I don't really see in a lot of paintings nowadays that I really love Echo, but then his drawings are just like intense. Um, like he draws over top of the paintings. This one is uh, Perseus and Andromeda. And they're so narratively complex. And he draws upon this mythology, but also writing in uh, parts of his own history that he knows of and compiling them. Um, yeah, personal hero for me. Personal hero for me, totally, completely. And uh, Francesco uh, Guardia, um, his ink works. I take a lot from his ink works, how he uses them, how everything looks so complex, but um, they're so involved with mark making. They're so, like, there's like the breath of it. Like, it's just wild. It's just wild to me. Like, I always find, I always find myself a loss for words when explaining his drawings because they're just layered and layered, but they're not paintings, but they're studies for paintings, but they exist so densely and they have such an event process to them when seeing them in person i was just like this is this is what i want my stuff to be this is my stuff right here and i love that sort of antiquity i love conversing with uh previous histories but then also making my work look as if it existed for a previous history like they're just sort of laid off in the back there and you just sort of find it in the woods you're like oh this stuff right here this stuff is wild um, I love this sort of appeal, this sort of look for it. And this, uh, and this sort of like process of undrawing, being able to make a mark and going like, great, that, um, that's part of that column there. Or yeah, I just laid this tone out, that's gonna be um, a shadow. And just letting things exist as they exist. Um, oh, and Claude Lorraine, just for uh, his mark making and uh, drama. Oh my goodness, drama. I'm like gripping the air right now. Drama. Um, 
I really like his drawings are really tiny, but then really large. Like they're, his studies are just works themselves. And I can't get over how he uses marks as tone. And I'm like, oh, who, how could I do that? Um, another personal hero of mine, I'm always looking at their work. And this Buford Delaney painting that I saw with my partner um, last weekend, which was incredible at the Knoxville Museum of Art. Um, if you ever get a chance to check out Buford Delaney, um, please check out his work. And if you haven't um, been to Knoxville Museum of Art, um, take a gander, go there for the weekend. Wonderful place. Wonderful place. Uh, basically, what am I up to now? Um, seeing family, honestly. Uh, my, this is my brother's garden, my brother and his partner's garden. And he's just been just growing a garden in this meantime, living his life. And it's been wonderful revisiting my family and seeing how they are after I've been just running all over the place and trying to make work. Um, it's really beautiful and it's been wholesome because the one thing I, um, I've always told everyone or the one thing I try to tell everyone recently is that you don't have to make work right now. You don't have to be involved in something that's um, commodification or like with the system or with a job. You don't need that right now. Like I, I'm the biggest proponent of finding yourself and introspection for orientation, placing yourself and going, this is how I am. This is how I feel is what we need right now. Because the original paradigms that existed aren't necessarily what are here now or not necessarily what will be. What will be is something that's going to be emotionally generative. Um, and then I, um, here's my recent studio at ETSU, my, um, alma mater. Um, I've been an artist in residence there recently for the last two months. I've been, um, at a residency also at Chautauqua, which is a brilliant program. Um, the, Instruct the mentors are wonderful people. Um, I've learned so much and there were so many artists there with so many brilliant ideas that I've had so many great conversations with that um, I do feel that disconnect between um, them and my computer, which now I have this sort of intimate relationship with my laptop, but I, I've enjoyed like me just putting things together, rushing, smacking things together, putting it together. Does this work? No, it doesn't. Interesting. Also, I like to show this like cultivation, like what I've cultivated over the time where my brother's cultivated. And it's interesting seeing these parallels together. Like he has such this, this sort of warm, rich, lush sort of place and mine seems so, sort of sterile, but like it's so, uh, they're so different, but so similar, I feel. Um, and these smaller works, which are works that I'm still working on currently that I don't know if they're going to work through. I've been viewing um, as assignments for myself. I've been viewing media and different sorts of movies, television, and taking image stills from those, drawing from those. Particularly, this was from the show Watchmen. Um, it sort of drew, it, it was sort of a, like a eureka moment, like, aha, um, I've been using this sort of ghost imagery like in the background of a lot of my works and they're kind of hidden, honestly, but um, it was interesting seeing the watchman use this imagery that I did. And I was like, Oh, perfect. And so this painting of this drawing is sort of a love letter for the watchman, but that also a part of my own history where I remember my brother and I playing with my grandfather with uh, golf clubs and swords and these uh, like these sort of fake swords, like, um, theater source playing and like having this sort of same interaction. Um, and I've been really enjoying like making my work denser, but also processing little bits around me. Um, in this smaller drawing I've been working on, um, sort of about fascism, like, but it's also about the virus, but then also about um, the racial climate. Um, it, I'm, I'm noticing it's all a part of the same stuff. It's, all at once, like quarantine brings it and highlights um, inadequacies in our economies. And then we begin to see what's actually wrong. We're not involved in media. We're not going outside or like pushing something aside. We're, we're like, hey, like there's really something incorrect. We should change this. And I want to, I wanted to have that encounter with the economy, being in the economy, having an encounter with me as they're telling me, or like a child to take your mask off. Don't worry, you're gonna solve this by just taking your mask off. 
you can like you don't really need like the economy you don't really need us just take it off take your mask off walk around freely and everything is fine and it's strange the fact that for a long time we had that and people were like no it's okay but then people were like well let's do stuff um, and it's been a strange time and it's been really tough to orientate. I always go back to orientation again, <laughs> um, find yourself in this and find what's right. Um, and that's the way I use my work. I, whatever mimics, like, so I can put it this way. Um, the work that I make mimics my internal turmoil or mimics what I'm going through at the moment. It's almost a journaling process for me. This is how I figure out things. This is how I find the right move by compiling imagery, placing it on a page and going, that's strange. <laughs> or that's where I need to go. And finding a journaling process for you is also a wonderful thing. I've known so many people currently doing bullet journaling or writing or reading. Um, yet again, introspection is what we need right now and radical vulnerability. Um, having myself open having yourself open to what's new, what's the next thing in line without saying, no, I don't need that. Because then we're stuck in the same original paradigms. We're stuck in a system or, or in a place that's tough. It, it's tough. But working towards it, journaling, finding something um, outside of that and being open to the possibility that, yeah, there is more and it will be okay. Um, and then also uh, a litho that I'm actually quite proud of that's at Chautauqua currently um, for an exhibition. And something I've been really thinking about is my brother and I, or um, titled John Fan and Dimey. Um, the story behind it was that my I wanted to see what my little sister, when she was born, what would she say or how did she see my brother and I? How did she see us for the first time? What did we look like? Were we camouflaged? Like, were we trying to fit in what like what sort of energy do we have and the names of the the name of the piece came from our nicknames my sister at the time couldn't pronounce jonathan so she always pronounced it as john fan and my little brother um diamond um my grandfather would uh, his nickname for him was dimey and um that's what she would call us going along and i and i think about this image quite often nowadays and I like to and I also I like to hide it in other other images too like little references and um, thanks for someone else um, also um, big amalgamation of resources I love to use um, burn away number uh, ink and hyperallergic um, Logan Lochner and Harag Britannian respectively um, great editors and fantastic writings that come out of it um, and for any other artist out there, locate arts, white columns. Um, if you're trying to like our fantastic residents, excuse me, not residencies, but um, let's see, fantastic registries, excuse me, <laughs> fantastic registries and perusing through places like that or art store, which is fantastic for art. Um, just wonderful to look at. I've been really obsessed with this Frida Kahlo image that I didn't include. I'm just trying to include so much. This Frida Kahlo painting that is just wonderful um, that I just can't get enough of. I keep zooming in. Um, and uh, Wix, Grad Cafe, um, if you're trying to build stuff. Um, and then also my contact information. Um, my website, thejonathanadams.com. Feel, like, feel free to visit at any time. Um, send me a message at my email, which is jadamsdesign05 at gmail.com or Instagram at the Jonathan Adams. Honestly, just send me a message. I'm always open. Uh, I try to get back as soon as possible. Um, I will say though, that screens, totally over them, totally over screens, um, totally over um, being able to look at like entertaining yourself for that, but also learning. Um, I've been sort of like taking a break, pushing myself away and finding myself. So, but send me a message. Um, I'm always free and available and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I can't guarantee it'll be the day of or the day after, but it's going to be within the week. It's going to definitely be in the week. Um, let's see here. Also, questions. Um, thank you all for having me. Um, if you have any questions, I'm totally free to answer. Let's see here. Let's stop sharing this.
and let's see. Thank you. But the limited color scheme will work. Yes. Um, I mostly use black and white or like grades to sort of exist as the normalcy. Um, that is the world that we know of. Um, that is something we always interact with. But the interactions of color, the interactions of those um, those phosphorescent, those fluorescent sort of um, that glitter, it it more than it's sort of it's like an interjection of magic. It queers the space and it changes it because once you find something that's different or something that's otherworldly or mysterious or ominous, it has a presence that you can't necessarily grasp. And it, I found it was the hardest thing for me to make drawings of the same tone, but then also painting. I didn't want to necessarily paint. I, I wanted to be about the mark making. I wanted to be about the form, but then including this as a disruption to also attract your eye. But then also it's, um, it's kind of a diversion, honestly. A lot of the work um, has something else in it or another work in it entirely that's off to the side or I try to hide it right in front of your face, but it's like it's having multiple conversations with you on different plateaus. Um, I hope that answers some. Let's see here. Definitely. Yeah, totally makes you pay attention. Um, I couldn't, yeah, I tried, uh, I used to do um, old master paintings, like old master copies. Um, from the department chair of ETSU, Mira Gerard, Gerard, wonderful, wonderful person, fantastic painting skills. And she was like, you should copy these. This is, um, you should copy this work and copy this. And doing the oil work is fantastic. But then also, oof, I cannot do it throughout the day. I don't have a space for it. Um, it, beco it becomes so much more about the materials and about the place you're living in than actually being able to make that drawing. And I find that a $2 bottle of Sumi ink, a brush and a paper, I could do that anywhere. And I can make, I can have the same sort of conversation by elevating my drawings to a point that are totally different. Um, yeah, and I really wanted to push it. Let's see here. But yeah, I've, I've always really enjoyed that. Um, and I think right now, my partner and daughter and I are really playing Mortal Kombat 11. Um, I always want to talk about Mortal Kombat 11. It's one thing I'm just like set on right now um, because it's kind of a distraction. It's a fantastic distraction right now. Um, let's see. Let's turn our museum. Do you remember it? How do you see the role of museums changing now? Yeah. Um, the first time I went to an art museum, it's a tough question actually. I don't, I don't actually remember. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. First art museum I went to, um, I will say it was the Hands-On Museum in Johnson City. Um, they had a fantastic um, idea that like if kids are coming, I was a child at the time, if kids are coming, they want to touch it, they want to have that tactility. I really, really love that place. And I really enjoy the way it's become. Um, it was so interesting being able to see these objects that would tell you these histories and you can like grasp them and hold them. And I find that I always want to give something for the viewer, some sort of visual tactility um, that even though you can't touch the work because it's just on paper and the oils from your hands will change it. But like, I want to give that sort of tactility as well. Um, and I see the role of museums changing significantly. Um, instead of, let's see, at first, I would say the role of museums was to exhibit and find and give a place, but then also have a conversation, which is different than having um, a gallery for profit, which is turning over work. Museums are about the history. It's about the language of history. And I see the role of museums taking more of an active role than they have before, pushing forward and finding things that are making history like okay this is the thing and becoming more of the cutting edge than um like more so than uh, for-profit galleries that are always like turning over artists back to back um thank you Ernest. 
Yeah, I really, I really try to dig deep in the area. I'm just learning. I still learn new stuff as I go along. I found there was a whole town um, that was um, that's underwater here, and I didn't know that. And I was like, "Wait, where? Where is that?" <laughs> um, yeah, I'm always looking for new things in my area, and always trying to find new, uh, neat and little brilliant histories. Um, you find, let's see, do you find that you're hard on yourself when you want to try something new? Not really. I think I find that I'm hard on myself when um, I can't find what I want out of that new thing just yet. Um, it's mostly with time for me. When I find a new thing, I'm like, great, let's do it. And I'm just I'm gone. But then it's always tough for me once I finish or once I've begun to learn the basics. I find that I'm like, was that a really useful way of my time? And I find I'm harder on myself about time management than I am about trying that new thing because that new thing always informs something else. And it's so generative to work from something brand new because you're bringing things to that necessarily someone or something or that actual experience hasn't experienced yet. So it becomes this sort of confluence of interesting works that is just wild that I love. Let's see, how am I connecting with other artists during this time? Instagram, honestly, um, Instagram and uh, Zoom calls. Um, um, like I said before, I've been distancing myself from mostly anything screen based. And it was strange in the beginning of quarantine uh, where everyone's like, you can make a book during this time. And it's like you can um, write or get get into shape. And it's like, but not really. You don't have to. You don't have to do any of that. You have to find yourself. You could do that too. It's, and people protesting, putting on performances, like that's fantastic as well. If that's what you want to do, do that. But I find Instagram text message has been really fruitful. And I've been, it's been really tough connecting with so many people because immediately you used to go be able to find somebody and go hanging out their house. And like, this is fantastic, but you can't do that anymore. So it's, there's so many people wanting to connect with you to this digital space. I find sending paintings or drawings or parts of my studio practice to people or just talking about my day, have doing something with no real goal in mind, just doing a thing going, well, I'm heading here uh, or like, it's like, Hey, all, um, I made this drawing today. I think I'm gonna take a nap or I think I'm gonna read this book and just, telling someone what you did today. I find it's a really fantastic place marker for yourself and um, a really fantastic place marker for your friends and other artists in particular, because we all sort of feed off that sort of conversation. We feed off each other. And I find just sharing and being a part of something um, or not being a part of something, honestly, um, informally has been really wonderful. Um, however, I still would like to have a morning where I could just wake up and just do nothing. Um, I love those mornings now. It's really strange, but I really love those where I can just wake up and just do nothing. It's like, yep. I can just um, chill here for a second. And um, if I want to go do a thing, I'll go do a thing. Um, I'm still working. However, I'm still making new drawings. Um, but I find like making new work and making new drawings and like trying out this thing doesn't really connect with any artists I know or any friends, um, people seem distant um, when that happens. They're like, hey, check this new stuff out. Look at all this. Like, yeah, it's like you're making stuff. But more or less, yeah, I just want to keep it light and formal and just tell people what I'm doing right now. Let's see here. Let's see. Did I miss any of those questions? Oh, cool. There's a little help button right down there. Sweet. If I miss any questions, um, please go ahead and type them back in. Um, I'm only seeing them as they go. They're just going down at the bottom. Um, but uh, then, yeah, most recently, the most uh, the museum I went to was the Knoxville Museum of Art. Uh, they have a Buford Delaney and James Baldwin show, which is just wonderful. It's just wonderful. Um, it chronicles their life and how they work together and how James was enamored with um, Buford's paintings, but then invested in the person he was himself. And it was very warming. And I think it was sort of an, it's a definitely an exhibition that people should see more. 
um, because it gives that emotional vulnerability. And you see the rawness that Buford put together and you get to see his, um, his affection that he shows for James, who in his own right is a fantastic philosopher. Um, yeah, I just have the best times of viewing exhibitions. Um, and then I would say viewing exhibitions online, that's been wild. That's been some wild stuff. Um, but then also, I can have a good time with it. I can totally have a good time with it. Um, yeah, I was thinking about um, viewing uh, other works on Instagram and how I miss that sort of tactile experience and how I miss like finding a piece of work and going like, whoa, check this out. This is nuts. I love this right here. And just seeing it in person and being enveloped by it. Um, because you don't get that. You get to control so much from your cell phones or your laptop or your television. And you sort of get it. It sort of competes with everything else, too. Because when you're streaming um, Avengers Endgame uh, on your television, and then you have to look at a painting, they're, they're, they're right on the same level. They're on the same platform. You, have, you sort of begin to think of them that way as well. Um, but, I'll, but so far, I... I um, I've been thinking about, yeah, to try not to compete with that. Try not to have a thing that's totally digital, but like, all right, so this thing is a problem. It's like they should fight each other. They don't. Art is such a wonderful thing that I've experienced that you can still experience online that, oh my goodness, I've just loved. Let's see. I just feel being back at ETSU. Does it bring back any memories? Does it make you think of any unfinished business or work? Yes. Uh, yeah, ETSU was my alma mater. Love that place to death. Love the faculty, uh, Vanessa Mayoraz and Andrew Ross. Wonderful people. Um, and honestly, I think um, I don't I don't give enough people enough props for giving me that space. Um, the professors really believing in me and supporting my work and my friends uh, in fact like, the cohort that I had at Rutgers and in, in, in ETSU wonderful because I, I honestly wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have these conversations and my work would not be any, like it would just be just not what it is today if without them um, it, but it's making me content with my history because the the image I showed was uh, one of my fundamentals classes um, back in 2011 and I remember I took 3D uh, sculpture there and I was like what is this it's like well, where are we learning to draw where it's like like I can't, and I was like trying to put something together and it just wasn't happening. And I remember my frustrations and my, my scope of how art was viewed, and like what I knew. Um, it brings back so many and so many friends. Oh my goodness. All right, this is, a, this is really funny too. Um, for, I think it was my junior year in the same room, I had made this drawing that exists on the ceiling. And I was like, all right, I gotta put it up. I have critique tomorrow. It's like, Gotta have it, gotta have the drama. But as I left, I left with some friends, we went for some snacks, it was around midnight. I was like, all right, great. I came back at one and I was like, great, I'm just gonna put it up on the, on the ceiling. We're all gonna do this. It was this nine foot uh, drawing that I had up on the ceiling made of ink, charcoal and like layered layers of transparencies from uh, tracing paper. And I was just totally in love, I was totally in love. And, but I walked up to the door and the door was locked. And I was like, what's the key code? So I kept pressing in the key code. And I was like, I don't know, but it's not working. Cause they reset the key locks after a certain amount of time. And I was like, what do we do? And I was like, wait a minute. I kept that window open. Oh my goodness. And I remember I had to, I was, uh, my friend was like, All right, I'll give you a boost into the window so you can get inside so you can make it work. Cause I was working in there at that night and I had my key code, I had my locks. I was like, this is fantastic. But since everything reset, I got locked out and I was like, everything's set up. All my stuff's changing. Like it's, it's all charging on the inside. It's laid out. Like I can't leave this that way. They're coming back tomorrow to the room and I need to move it. I was supposed to be like, I was supposed to be gone like in all this straighten out because they have a class in here and it's like, and this happens. So I was trying to like climb into the window and for the first time, like this is when I realized I needed to learn how to do a pull up because I was just hanging there because my friend had given me a boost on the window and I'm hanging there and I'm like, just not pulling my weight up. And I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. 
I just can't. He's like, but you got to, you got to get in. So my friend at the time pushed the button and the door opens. Says, yeah, you just, you just have to put this in. And I was like, Oh, that's why I was panicking. So what happened was I was panicking. They had reset the key code, but I wasn't entering it in because it didn't activate until the next day. And I was like, no way. So I was just panicking, like hitting the button. So I, so I broke into a place that was totally open for me and I'm just hanging by the window at one in the morning, like, Oh my goodness, they're going to be so upset. So I tell this story to one of our professors and he's like, really? Yeah, the store was fine. You could have just called me. I'm like, I just, I panic, man. I'm, I'm, I'm panicked so hard. <laughs> yeah. It was so hilarious to me and he had a good chuckle out of it. Um, I told the department and they had a chuckle out of it as well. Um, and then I missed some friends. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I, yeah, I definitely miss, uh, I definitely miss my friends from undergrad because there's, they seem to be everywhere. Um, Germany, Japan, um, parts of Mexico, parts of Canada, everyone's doing something different and they're traveling the world. And I'm like, you guys are killing it out there. This is just great to see that you're fine. And it's great to see that you're okay. And I've had such a wonderful experience reconnecting with them over the past few weeks or honestly the past few months as I ended my uh, grad school experience, but then I also came back home to see like, not just my family, but like see, I wouldn't say the detritus, but I wouldn't say the remnants or like parts and like, sort of like the echoes of people I used to know. Um, beautiful space, beautiful space. Um, definitely got a ton of work I need to finish. Definitely got a ton of work I need to finish. Um, I have the storage facility of just unfinished art. Um, it's just sort of living there. I keep coming back to it every once in a while. And I'm like, oh, I'll just try this again. And then I just make another one or, um, yeah. And then it makes me want to reconnect with people I haven't seen in years. Um, it's been so fruitful. It's been so fruitful just um, thinking about it. It's also been a lot. It's also been emotionally a ton. Um, just because everything's just sort of like, flying at me at once but then also like i'm throwing stuff out um but it's been nice like finding a way to keep track of it uh yeah it's really generative um let's see here got my coffee over here mm. let's see so i'm curious to see what um, i'm always curious to see what other people are doing as well um, I remember I found this thing called geocaching for the summer and, um, I've always wanted to try that in a more professional sense to be able to, essentially it's like dead drops where they, they just drop this thing out in the woods and you just go find it. Um, but I find it's a really fantastic way to, uh, to explore and it gives me an excuse to go hiking and I've been taking a lot of these, uh, images, um, for myself, like uh, I took a bunch of images of lightning the other night, which was difficult, but really totally doable. <laughs> um, but then seeing sort of different types of foliage and questioning it and thinking about how I can use it as a, as a pattern or a texture or how I can lay it and fold it over into my current imagery. Um, it's wonderful stuff. Um, Ooh, and also this sweet Mark Thomas Gibson shirt. I almost forgot to talk about this. I love this shirt, man. Um, it was uh, from a one of his exhibitions he had in Philly. Um, let's see, was it Rosenwald? No. It'll hit me later. It'll hit me later after I get off the call and I go do something else. And I'm like making some more coffee. I'm eating dinner. And I'm like, oh, what's that? That's the thing. Um yeah, and um, he was like he was talking about this movement about uh, the new sort of NRA um, from a political like, uh, standpoint and a racial standpoint. It was really charged, and uh, I remember he made this gigantic flag out of it. Um, and he titled the NRA or the Negro Rifle Association, and his idea was to give um, let's see, was it two hundred and fifty um, people of color uh, an automatic rifle. And then he thought about, and he says, if that happened, then immediately they would have banned guns. And I thought about that process of how you could use um, something discriminatory and something like something terrifying, but then also use it as a generative change. 
Um, I could not get over the fact that, that existed. And I was like, no way. It's like, you made that thing? It's like, that exists? It's like, that's what you believe in? It's like, yeah, it was just a wonderful idea. And um, I've been just loving the death out of the shirt. Um, and I get so many questions about it, but I always get a chance. I always, if I get a chance, I always try to wear it, no matter where I go, no matter where I go. Let's see you. Man, I wish I could see y'all too. Man, because it like, because um, for Chautauqua, it was fantastic seeing people. Um, and fantastic getting to talk to them. Um, but it was always a bit of a strangeness to to be like, hello, let's e-meet you. And you you miss that sort of personal um, dynamic you have phys- that you have physically. And your interaction is like, hello. And that's strange. But then it's also like a different way of communicating. Um, but I was like, I'm always like grasping at it somehow. Let's see here. Um, I also have a ton of other works um, to show, or I can show. Um, let's see here. Oh, cool. So much this out. Wonderful. All right, let's see. Um, also, um, just talking to my family. Um, I think recently I've connected with my grandmother a little bit more than I have in the past or I have in the last, oh man, I want to say eight years, nine years. Her, like, our dynamic has changed um, when I entered school. And I was like, hello. Um, and I, I sort of pop in, I take care of what she needs, but then I talk to her. And but then it's been really strange. It's like time caught up with me all of a sudden because I left and then I woke up and I was like, I'm almost 30. What happened? Where am I? And like it, then I meet everyone else and it's like time just sort of like fell onto me. And they're like, so I've been doing this for the last four years, five years. I'm like, really? That's what you've been doing? That's crazy. Amazing. Amazing. Um, but then it's also like a, a bit of sadness as well because I really miss them. And it feels like I missed parts of their lives, but I felt like it was a part of their lives that they needed for themselves and they needed to find themselves without me. And it's been simultaneously jarring, beautiful, sad, traumatic, wonderful, and um, really, really different. It's been really different. But I've been connecting more with my grandmother as we go along. Um, basically, I call her nowadays, just, and I go over when I when I can. But I call her, and her and I just talk about conspiracies. We talk about conspiracies, what's going on in the world, and we talk about art. I send images to her throughout the day. I've been using uh, the Google Arts and Culture app. Wonderful app. Check it out. It's totally free. I think a lot of uh, people have been using it for. Um, like taking selfies and there was a trend for that about a year ago i'm losing track of time I'm losing track of time but about a year ago you would take but i've been using it um to just find work i just google a thing and I, I do this and i'm like oh snap yeah love that app love that app incredible stuff um and it's totally free and you can share between people and it, that zoom in feature like i can just keep zooming and i'm like how far can i zoom like what do you got like what can you what, like, what can the museums tell me and i get really excited and a little little geeky about it and i'm like did you, did you see this i didn't know this was this painting was cracked here that's crazy um oh my goodness yeah i've been diving deep into that out so much um but i've been sharing them back and forth with my grandmother and she sends me some and she's like check out this sculpture this amazing glass work and i go what is this where'd you find this and it's like so this period she goes yeah it's amazing it's amazing you should look through it more and um and then i just send her parts of my work and then uh, then she gives me a lot of pep talks oh my goodness um gotta have a support system 
got to have a support system. I think one of the other things that um, people don't have is one is a support system, like calling your family, calling those close to you and, and asking them. It's like, am I doing this thing right? It's like, what do y'all think? And like really having a rapport with someone else and uh, someone close to you and being like, it's OK. We can go. Um, we can go make dinner and then you can take a nap after. And I'm like, that's exactly what I need. My partner has also been really fantastic about that because um, she's been helping me like go through stuff. And as I've been transitioning out, I had a flood recently in my studio. Well, not my studio, one of my storage facilities. Um, and I lost, I didn't lose, but so many works were just drenched, totally soaking wet. Um, my whole flat file works from close friends, um, lithos and uh, diazo types and scrawlings or photos I totally like were just totally damaged and I didn't know if I can be able to find uh, a way to salvage them but I did I salvaged them and she was a, a wonderful help being able to put things together for me calming me down and being like it's not that bad it's bad but it could have been worse and I'm like you know what? you're right it totally could have been worse um and she's been a wonderful amount of help. Um, I think the only thing about being at home recently is finding a workplace, um, finding like the right sort of place you can do your own sort of practice. And I've, I'm just not working the same way I used to. I used to be very much studio based and I used to stay in the studio and I would be there. And at Rutgers in New Jersey, I had this couch. I would live on this couch. I didn't live on this couch. No, I, I had an apartment. I have an apartment there, but um, I would sleep on this couch. Basically, I lived in there. <laughs> I slept on this couch so often in between paintings. I would paint something, um, get frustrated, go outside to 7-Eleven, come back, draw some more and be like, that's the thing. That's exactly with um, uh, that larger piece. Um, I, I want to be better. It was I, I just couldn't work it out. But I would always spend so much time in the studio and I always feel um the best way for an artistic practice is through art, well, artistic practice. That's the only way to like find that sort of um, aesthetic that you're looking for because so many artists and so many students I've had over the years um, always express their displeasure what imagery they're making. Like, I'm just not doing it this way. It's like, but you can't and that's okay. It's like, I can't draw or paint like you can. You can't do it like I am. And that's wonderful because that offers so much. It gives unique perspectives and it was tough. It, it was tough to be able to work that out. But I always believe like having your work nearby and having my paintings or my drawings beside me and like freely accessible um, is how I really, that's how it used to work. But now I'm working like smaller. I'm like sitting on the floor more uh, and drawing there and making these tiny little drawings. Um, and then I take them back to the studio and then I make a big drawing and I go, I don't know if that's what I want. But then I worked out a small one. Um, I can't get over it. I can't get over it. But yeah, it's it's like um, I'm working. Um, instead of exploring, I have more of a timeline or a deadline for things, like a personal one. Where I'm like, wow, uh, this idea I want to explore for eight hours, but I got to make this. I want to make this drawing. I'm gonna crunch it down to two. And if I don't do it in this two hours, I'm not gonna be able to come back to this to another week. And um, I see that's how quarantine's working and that's how the world's working now is that you feel like you have a time crunch and um, it feels like you're not getting anything together, but you are, but you are. Um, yeah, you really are for everyone out there for me, myself, that I always think I need to hear is that, yeah, it's, you're getting somewhere. We're going somewhere and it may not be absolutely apparent now. And it may just look really crappy right now in the future, but that's okay because it's going to be a lot better and you're, we're all going to work through it and you're going to work through it too. Um, yeah. And it's going to be fantastic when we come out on the other end. I know that for sure. Um, so yes, if you, um, if any of you want to contact me in the future, please do. I'm totally open to anything. If you have some artwork you want to send me, if you use a Google app and you find me on there, you find me on Instagram, or you want to go to my website, please do. Yeah, send me a thing. Send me a drawing or a painting or a work or a sculpture or a happening that you find. Be like, hey, I got this thing. Or you want to uh, 
need to be involved or you're in, you want to be involved with something I'm doing, send me a message. If you want to have a reading or writing group, let's do that too. Stuff is wonderful. Stuff is wonderful. Um, so yeah, anytime, especially like thejonathanadams.com or um, on Instagram at thejonathanadams. There's an underscore between the and Jonathan. Um, feel free at any time just to send me something. Um, I hope I answered everyone's questions just sufficiently. And um, I'm, I'm just really ecstat- ecstatic about Wiregrass. I'm excited about this biennial. Uh, I'm excited about all the other artists here and all the artists and people that are working to make these things happen. Um, y'all are killer. All y'all are killer, amazing people, amazing folk out here, like really putting together this stuff and making things happen because we can all make little things happen. Um, yeah, I hope I got it all. Of course, thank you all. Thank y'all for having me. Y'all are wonderful. Um, yeah, I will be talking to all eventually in the future, sometime. And like I said, anytime, I'm always available. Um, 